Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. This is Jerry from Backcountry Ranching and we're going to start working on that little overland trailer that I purchased in the last video. We need to get a whole bunch of things done before I can make it mine to take it out in the woods. First thing we're going to work on in this video is prepping the body, getting it ready for paint. And that includes doing fiberglass repairs. When I talk about doing fiberglass repairs is where the body itself has cracked and best place to see it is right here is the delamination on the bottom we need to repair before we can move forward and paint it so i don't know the extent of it you can tell uh where it has been patched before where it is peeled you can clearly see that in the paint but we need to start removing all the lights the fenders i need to Remove this toolbox in the front. Now that toolbox in the front has one issue that I need to take care of. So it appears that this toolbox is put or mounted to the frame with self-tapping screws. Not a big fan of that at all. We need to correct that. I'm going to be dealing with that in a much later video when we weld in the overland hitch. Not your standard ball hitch. We got something special, but let's get started in this video. I will give credit and say they use some big washers, which definitely helps out. And that's the reason why I don't like self-tapping screws. Not only are they weak, they also don't like being removed. This is the reason why I hate self-tapping screws. See that thing just stripped out? They also had these big lag bolts inside. I can get this box out of the way and expose all the dirt and crap that builds up behind there. It's definitely another problem identified right there either gotta have a gap big enough everything's gonna fall down or completely seal it off and you can see right there there's another big fiberglass crack that I need to take care of there's not much wire to play with there because it's fastened down along the side so I think you can see the solder points inside. I think I'm just going to uh, get new marker lights and extend them. That way I can make them serviceable because they're going to be pulled a little too tight. Once I get the angle iron on, it'll be easier once these are removed to do that. There's one thing on this trailer that's going and it's not going back on. Just because I think it looks super cheesy. It's coming over here because we got this kind of like retro looking outside light that i think is just super cheesy it's got an led light in it but still it's going to come off and going to be replaced with a motion detector solar powered light i don't know what it is if it's a cheesy led light in it or what but bugs me staring at this thing just bugs me I got something else I'm putting in there. There we go, there we go, there we go. There's our wires. We're just going to snip them off. There we go. There's the brand new one. It has a cheesy LED light in it as well. So I got that cover off of painting. There's a sign in the corner, still got the diesel tank. This is all cleared off. And I'm putting everything into a bag. I'm gonna mark it. So I need to get rid of this diesel tank. For one thing, I don't think it's UV rated. You can tell it's already yellow. That cap is cracked. I don't like the setup with the rubber going through the wall. I got a stainless steel tank coming in and I got a bulkhead to go through there. We're gonna clean that up. So I got my jerry can. 
and have fun old with them. So the fun part is going to be draining all that diesel out and then we're going to pull the tire and the fender off. Oh, we're already starting to leak diesel fuel. Come on. There we go. Well, see? Oh. So one thing I do want to address, I come over here to the tire is, is that just about to remove them. There is a little bit of play in there, so we're gonna have to adjust the preload. Bearing still spin really good, but at Looseness is going to cause some issues. One of the nice things about these hubs is that there's a grease nipple in the axle itself So I think we just need to tighten up the bearing a little bit get this fender off And we can start identifying all the issues that we need to fix on the body Now it's time for the good the bad and the ugly If you've been following my channel for a long time when I did the rust repair on the f-150 do you remember when I said, when you start working on something, the repair is always going to be a lot bigger than what you think? And that is exactly is what's happening here. So I'm going to go over some of the things I discovered when I was grinding it out. First thing, there is fiberglass on this trailer, just not where you think. So where you see these, this has all been a fiberglass repair because what happens is that the wood gets a little crack and starts to delaminate as I'm going to show you over here on this side here, started off as just a little crack. And as you can see, as I opened it up, it got bigger and bigger. So I'm going to fiberglass patch that. Also down here with the rock guard, I'm going to get another piece cut 16 inches. That's going to come up higher to where the toolbox is, right down to the frame. Because I don't want moisture building up in that area there. As you can see, it has stained. So this side here isn't horrible. In the last video I was talking about there was fiberglass here, but there actually isn't. What the deal is, is like two pieces of plywood. And the guy, or whoever the original builder was, had this idea that he was going to come down to the frame, silicone to the frame, and everything is going to be good. As you can see, I chewed it out all the way across. But as you can tell, moisture still got in. That's where I'm talking about eliminating it doing the checker plate 12 inches from the frame up to help eliminate this issue happening again. Unfortunately, this is the side that is really bad where the fender was and it really got underneath the wood and I really had to chew it out. So there's going to be a big fiberglass repair on this side before we put the aluminum plating on so these repairs are going to take a little bit longer than i thought but in the end it's going to be worth it i think i'll be happy with the progress and that is reinforces the idea why i'm putting aluminum angle iron all around the corners because that'll help eliminate the seams right there from getting more moisture in causing any kind of damage the good thing is the roof is rubberized and i got some rubberized paint and i'm going to put another coat on plus underneath I'm going to have to rubberize underneath it is paint it and it actually has been holding out pretty good but I need to silicone around the frame and then rubberize it. Funny thing is I picked up one fiberglass repair kit from Princess Auto, one thing of resin and fiberglass cloth and I also found a brand new kit that's been sitting in my garage for I don't know how long so I'm definitely going to have enough fiberglass repair to do all the work. 
So everything's been prepped, everything's been grinded out. It's time to do the fiberglass work, at least get the start of it going. I already did some patches, I'm gonna show you, and then I'm gonna show you how I do it. So just on the front, we got some fiberglass matting in there. Once we sand it down, we're gonna put some fiberglass filler coming down to the bottom here. Same here, we got our fiberglass mat all in the wood. We're going to, once it dries, we're going to give it a quick sand and then hit it with some fiberglass filler. I got some short strand. This is the tool right here that is magic for working fiberglass. It's called the fiberglass roller and it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. And this is stuff I'm going to use afterwards. I picked this up at Princess Auto. This is Bondo glass, short strand, which is going to fill in the gap. I got all my strips right down there. I'm not gonna lie, this part right here, it's gonna be a pretty major repair. First thing I'm gonna do is mix up the rest of this resin. I'm gonna use this little container that I've been using all along. Anytime you're working with fiberglass, you want to have your gloves on. And I'm gonna use up the rest of this resin in this bottle which isn't gonna be enough I got the second bottle here we'll crack that open mix up lots because we're gonna need lots we've got our hardener Get crazy with it because that's the end of it. We're gonna mix her up now. And I'm gonna use a one inch cheap paintbrush. Doesn't matter if you get hairs in the fiberglass or not. It's not gonna make a difference either way. There we go, mix that up nice. We're set. First things first, what I like to do is I'm going to coat all the areas where I'm going to be working with a heavy coat of the resin. That's my first order of business. Get it in all the little places that I possibly can because we got a big repair here. And I'm sure if we keep picking at this, we can keep opening it up more and more and just open up to a whole world of sadness so we're going to start at this corner here take my first little piece which is this one right here i'm going to put it on there i got my little fiberglass roller here it's essentially like a paintbrush and because of the ribs it rolls it right in all right so now you see that and i'm gonna take my brush now and then i dab all the areas where the resin's a little on the thin side the next largest piece right here same thing put it on we're going to start rolling it. And then I'm going to take my resin, start dabbing it. There's a million ways to do fiberglass. Everybody has their own method. I just like being liberal with it. Really work it in. This Fiberglass mats the first layer and it's also one of the most important layers. So I'm gonna take one of these strips Come down here Get that in there so That strips on there 
Dab it all around. I'm just trying to work somewhat a little fast here because work it in with this little tool. I got my drips, get rid of those drips. There we go. What are you doing, Miss Carvins? Are you talking to the birds? And where are you? Do you see the birds outside? Do you want to attack them? Yeah? Do you want to eat them? Do you? Yeah? Oh my, you're just laying in the sun. So if you're watching this video, this is a perfect example on how not to build an overland trailer. And once I'm finished rebuilding this trailer, I'm going to make a video on all the things that were done wrong and how I corrected them. So basically, anytime you're building a trailer, especially like this, out of wood, you really have to be careful. As you can see, the delamination, that's why it's always good that... I mean, this is just painted, and as long as it stays painted without getting rock chips, you shouldn't have any problems, but as you can see, we already have. Anyways, getting back down to here, the problem with this is, is that with the wheel well cover on, even though it was siliconed on the bottom here, all it takes is rocks and stuff to start making a hole big enough for the smallest amount of moisture to get in. Once a little bit of moisture starts getting in, then it's game over because then moisture starts getting in the wood will start to swell once the wood starts to swell it starts opening up more and more and as you can see here we tore all this out got all the way back to there put the first layer of fiberglass matting on once it dries we're going to give it a quick sand put some fiberglass filler and like i said before we are using checker plate one foot which is going to come from here all the way down to the bottom of the frame and we are going to put some waterproof silicone in there like no tomorrow so that we are not going to have this issue ever again this will be solved after i'm finished in all honesty if i was to patch this up and return it to the way it was realistically I could probably get a year, maybe two years out of it before the problem came back. Except this time, the problem would be behind the fiberglass and would be start pushing the fiberglass out. Gonna use this product called Sure Wipe, which I've used for years. Can't seem to find it anymore, but I got something else to use afterwards. And we're gonna wipe this panel down, get as much of that sanding dust out as we possibly can. Yeah, working on this trailer. The body work is definitely going to take the longest for sure. Do this a few times. You're gonna need like a bigger spatula to dig down into the depths there. Yeah, get on there. Ah. Now the one thing with using any type of filler, even doing fiberglass repair, if you don't have enough hardener in there, you're gonna be doing it all over. 
the more hardener you have in it the faster it cures and we're just gonna mix this up now comes the fun part applying it Basically just filling in all those gaps all the way along. And I'm gonna have to mix up some more as I just ran out. Well, that's all taken care of and that's pretty much all I have time for in this video. But I did accomplish a lot. The body work has been done. It'll have to be sanded. And then another coat to put on just to get everything level. That's starting to look way better than having the holes. That being said, we're going to drink a good old Saskatchewan beer. Greasy old Pilsner with the old bunny on it. Alright, shut her down. It's motherfucking beer time. A lot went in this video. At first, I thought the trailer had a fiberglass layer on it, but it doesn't. It appears to have fiberglass patches. As it appeared, when I removed all the, I guess I'd call it rot, but where water had got in between the layers and started to delaminate the plywood, however, ground it out. We fiberglassed it, we got some fiberglass filler, and it's going to be sealed with checker plating over top. So we're not going to have to deal with that issue ever again. It'll be taken care of. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is your first time coming to this video, if you came from, from somewhere else, there is going to be a whole little miniature series of me rebuilding this little Overland trailer to the way that I like it. And I can take it out and enjoy it. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot for watching. Motherfucking beer time. <laughs>